Okay. Um, tonight, I don't think there's any any movement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two o'clock, we had an FOMC meeting. That's why you can see that uh, this euro has been just trading in a very tight range. Is uh, the whole entire day from uh, 18230, but 30 pips range. Okay. Euro have been trading within 30, tip, 30 pips range. And uh, pound has been trading uh, 61 to 90, also 30 pips range. So uh, don't expect any uh, price movement uh, until the 2 o'clock uh, a.m. Yeah. So uh, practically, I don't know what, 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 what opportunity that we can look at. But if you have any, any uh, basically, I'm not looking at any trade right now because uh, I'll just want to wait for uh, the minute of meeting come out and then decide, uh, see where the price goes to. And then uh, look for start looking for opportunity, but uh, for in the meantime, uh, if you have any currency that uh, you you like to look at it uh, together, let me know. Or anything that you want to ask, you can also ask. Not necessarily have to be in live trading. Any trading uh, concept that you don't understand, you are welcome to ask. Uh, Benny, hi, this is Andy. Um, recently, I've been looking at this thing called pivot points, and uh, I do see that the price is quite similar to the zones that we draw, right? Support and resistance zone. So I'm wondering whether you have actually um, had a look at these pivot points and whether it's, uh, it's oh, useful. Pivot, in, yeah, pivot point yeah. was one of the earliest, one of the earliest ah, indicators okay. I used right. back in early 2000. Right? Uh, there are some people who really believe in it. They take, they take pivot point as a support resistant, just like any other support resistant, right? Some uh, uh, some people believe that it works. Uh, but personally, I don't think it works because I, I tried that, but maybe 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 many years ago, the way I I, I used a pivot point was not 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 right. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, having tried the pivot point, the, the, the one, the what, M1, what was, I can't remember now, P1 or is it? I can't remember. They got four level or three level, isn't it? Yeah, I got uh, P one to four and S one to four. Yeah, something. correct, yeah. correct. <clears throat> so it is uh not not something new. I I I I don't believe in the people point. Like they say again, right? So I I suggest you don't go there as well because you should just focus on the uh uh, uh liquidities rather than just uh support resistance. Okay, if thanks. So much. Support resistance and the people point they are almost the same thing, right? They are no different. Right, if support resistance already doesn't work, uh, I don't see people point works. Thanks, Benny. Yeah, I noticed but, that. But I mean, if you can uh, test out, you got you test out something that you can find useful, of course, by all means. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, yeah. looking at it. Uh, I mean, listening to some of the explanation, uh, some of the teachers online, and also looking at how they use pivot points. So I thought it would be. Um, I mean, if, if it's a good addition to the trade, okay, but if it makes it more confusing, then, uh, then I'd rather not use it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, I, I will do away with people point. Personally, I, I don't use it because I tried before. It doesn't work for me, so I will never do it back again. Right, so um, if you have any other question, anybody have any other question or any currency that you want to ask or any concept that you don't understand, uh, you're welcome to ask now and I can go through the concept with you again, right? Since uh, uh, I don't I don't expect any any trading opportunity right because of the two o'clock uh, two a.m. which is uh, we are talking about like now eight o'clock another six hours eh? is it six hours yeah six hours from now uh, I don't think any trader will make any move right now okay so uh, what we can also discuss is a little about what is likely to happen right. Now we have seen the uh, uh, this uh, U.S. bond continue to rally. Okay, U.S. bond continue to rally, make a higher high, higher low, right? Uh, it could be going through um, distribution that we do not know, but it it looks like market simply continue to make a higher high, higher low. 
Now, with the bond rally that high, okay, and S&P also rally, this is, these two are not supposed to move in the same direction, right? Because we, if we see uh, one, because on one hand, we see one risky asset, which is a stock market. On the other hand, bond is a safe haven, right? And, and not right now, what we see is both are moving in the same direction. So it really something has to break, right? It is either the bond is right or bond is wrong. Now, if the, if the bond is right, it means that the market is uh, pricing some deflation, deflationary pressure, but they disregard the inflation, I, I, inflation fear, right? So, so uh, and we, we take a look at the US 10-year yield, their inverse relationship to 10-year bond, right? It has been dropping from 1.8 until the low of, 1.1235. Now, if you pay attention to this level, it is not surprising why the price stopped there because that is where previously the spot money was consolidating and accumulating, right? This is exactly the backup, okay? These accumulations. And we also see that there's a trap order, not yet, of course, not yet. Uh, 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 unlock, but you can see that it is not surprising we see the price stop here. Okay, now potentially we might see the price to go come now lower, maybe to unlock this trap order. We don't, we we're not sure, but looks like looks like it, right? It is continuous in the downtrend. Now we see the yield is so low, continue move lower, and yet we saw inflation target. All the reports about inflation is rising. And yet the U is not moving higher. The, the, the U is moving the opposite directions, right? So we can see, we can say that uh, the big institutions are moving their money into the bond market. That's why we see the U is good because bond, bond price and bond U are inverse relationships, right? So with the, if we see the bond, we, if we see the big money flow into the bond market, it means that bond price will go higher. And then in that case, bond U will go down. Is it because of the central bank want to drive the yield lower, right? We, we, we really we, we are not sure. Or is it because the, some institutions start to move the money into the bond market? They have seen something that we do not know. Have, or rather, has the bond market uh uh, uh steve up something, sends out something that market is about to happen, right? And that's that's why we see that money start to flow into the safe haven. So everything is so confusing right now. So by tonight, let's uh, in the early morning, two o'clock. Let's see what the Fed say. If the Fed, Fed all along has been very very dovish. They say that the current current uh, inflation is uh, transitory, right? It's temporary, and it's all it it also also it is it is the price increase is also only to limit to a few commodity and sector. Right, so that's why they, they keep think, they keep saying that the current inflation is not last. It will not last, right? So they are not they are no keen they are not keen to do a, any tapering, and they continue to buy buy up a lot of bond every month, and continue to be very very uh, 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 dovish, right? And supply the uh, more liquidity to the market. But as we see the the price on in, the fear of inflation start rising, that's why uh, it is well difficult for us to predict what Fed is going to say. So it is better for us to just wait, wait for Fed to say something, right? But nevertheless, even we are waiting for Fed to say something, we also know that the Fed job is like the government is to they are, they are, they are, they, are, they are not telling the truth about what is happening in the economy. Even though the economy is going to deflation, they will say that no, and everything is fine, right? Because they do not want to create fear in the market, right? I mean, that, that's what they are supposed to do, right? I mean, I, 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 I really don't know whether they are supposed to tell the truth or, or not to create panic or try to lie to the public, right? So uh, the more the Fed say that everything is okay, I think that we should think that everything is not okay, right? So... Um, uh, no, knowing that their, their, their intention is not to create panic in the market, okay? 
So, uh, so I, I think that we, we have to wait for Fed to say what they say, well, see what they say. If they start to change their tone to be less dovish, they do not have to be hawkish because uh, if, if they right because right now they are very dovish. If they from dovish turn hawkish, that that would be a, a drastic change, right? That that if that will impact the market a lot, right? So I think they will start to be less dovish, right? And then maybe later, later on they will start to turn a little bit hawkish, right? Maybe they will say that they will start to look into tapering. Uh, this is already a uh, less dovish, right? If they say that they do not have to do anything, right? If they admit that it is, they, they might have to spend some time to look into some tapering. It, 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 that, is, that is a sign of less dovish. Okay, like I said again, they doesn't have to be hawkish, right? Now, if that's the case, that means they admit that there is an inflation fear. Now, if there's an inflation fear, right? It means that interest rate is likely to go higher, right? We will see the yield go higher, right? And bond start to fall, right? So these are all the, the things that we have to forecast and anticipate what the Fed is going to say. Like in this afternoon, I post uh, some uh, something uh, to share with in, uh, everybody in the community about the housing, potential housing crisis. Now, if you pay attention to all the news from the uh, China, now the biggest or the world most in-depth developer, right, in China, Henda, is already uh, under investigate, right? They are the government, the Chinese government already called him to sell, start to sell his assets to, to start to pay off the debt because they owe too much debt. They are the world High the biggest uh, 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 highest debt, right? So if this developer collapse, right, I I, I believe that uh, the whole of China the property will go uh, will, will, will go go down because that is the biggest developer in China, okay, and that is going to create a lot of uh, a consequence to the I think to the financial market because uh, and then of course also tension, right? Because people with the moment they feel that. Their hard-earned money, they, they work very hard for 20, 30 years. They save the money to buy the house, to, to buy the prop apartment, and end up that apartment, uh, the, the developer collapse, their money all disappear, right? I think this is going to uh, uh, create a lot of social unrest in China. And any kind of unrest in China or China, it will not be good for the uh, market as well, right? So this, this, again, we have to pay attention to this because this will involve about risk on and risk off, right? So that, that is the news. Now, the other the, uh, market I want to talk about is the U.S. Uh, stock, uh, the, the property market, which I show uh, the, uh, the graph, right? We can see that today the bank is very hesitant to lend out money. The standard is as if that back in 2013, where bank set up so many conditions, right, before they want to lend out to a potential home buyer. So what, what happened right now is we have to ask, why the bank, the on one hand, the central bank are giving very, very lenient in their, uh, in their uh, monetary uh, policy, right? Low interest rate. But why the bank hesitant to lend out money? In fact, they are creating a lot of difficulties for the home buyer to actually get the loan, right? The, I can only come up with one, 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 one reason. Uh, it is the bank sense that something is something is wrong, right? Something is wrong. People are uh, are not will not able to pay, right? And and there is a crisis is right now booming, uh, and they worry that if they lend out the money and if people are not able to pay, they will we will have a subprime crisis repeat two zero one eight again, and the bank will have a huge loss again, right? So I, I guess right now bank already learned their lesson back in two zero one eight. So now they have make. Uh, loan acquiring loan so difficult you can see from the graph right it's comparative to 2013 right now so so uh and also there's the the other graph we can see that the li li uh, the liquidity right the people who are not able to pay up is also on the rise so this again two reports actually confirm that uh people and american and consumer are not able to get their loan get the money they need to buy the five house and many people who get the loan they are not able to pay their loan so what what all we need right now is a little bit of uh, a catalyst 
a, a, a little push, right? I don't know by who, by Fed to raise interest rate. We'll see everything start to collapse, right? And, and uh, I, I think right now, we see the US stock market, or the US property market, property price, housing price has been going up and going up because this is pure speculations. I remember many years ago when Singapore property in condo, right? When people, when developers just about to build the condominium, not yet finished, people already queue up to buy, to take a queue, right? The queue number can exchange money, right? So this kind of, there are so many speculations. So I think right now it's happening in US right now. There are a lot of speculator that uh, drive the price higher. And these people are not there to buy the house. These people are there to speculate the property. They are they are hoping the price, property price will continue to push higher because of a low interest rate, right? And they are hoping that with a low interest rate, and they expect that Federal Reserve unlikely to increase interest rate anytime soon. So they are hoping on this, right, to make a make some good money in the property. So they speculate, right? And these people, these speculator are usually the uh, people who have who have some money, right? And they have some uh, money in the bank or they have some asset already. So when they go to the bank and take a loan, they qualify to take a loan. Okay, no problem for them to take a loan. But for the real buyer, the real home buyer, when they want to go to the bank and take a loan, basically their bank don't have money. They don't have any any assets to back to back. <laughs> so the bank will not give them the loan. So right now we have a market in US where a lot of home bar, home owner right now they are speculator, right? So now what will cause this speculator to start to sell, right? I think, right? This is just I think. Uh, one of the catalysts is if we see the Federal Reserve start to hint that they are going to increase interest rate in 2022 example, right? Because uh, I, I remember ma uh, many months ago, they are saying that uh, they will not consider to even think about uh, increase interest rate until 2023. But if they bring forward the date, right? It, maybe they will say, that, oh, maybe in 2022, we will increase interest rate. Now, this is already hawkish. Right, and this will cause the stock market to pull back. This will cause the housing price to drop because if the stock, if the Fed Reserve start to increase interest rate, that will create a problem for the housing loan. Interest rate will go up, right? Housing housing market definitely affected. So when the speculators start to see their 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 property start to the price start to go lower, right? What they are likely to do instantly is to look to uh, look for a buyer to, uh, to uh, look for a buyer for their for their for their for their property they want to sell okay they will want to sell the property for profit because they worry that property price will continue to drop uh, as it get closer and closer to 20, uh, 2022 where federal reserve start to increase interest rate property property will, will collapse where price will go down right so they want to take profit right now if they hear that federal reserve will increase interest rate so we are going to see the stock market start to pull back all right we are going to see the uh, property prices start to fall we are going to see all these speculators will start to sell their property uh, cut price each at each other to sell the price and yet we don't see any buyer we can see that those people who really want to buy a house, they want to buy a house, but they when they, they are rejected by the bank. So we will, we have a situation where you have oversupply, over, oversupply of seller, but no buyer. So this will, what will happen, this will intensify the collapse of the property price. Now, as the property price start to collapse, uh, what is likely to happen is the bank will demand those people who already have a loan to top up their, uh, their, their, their account, right? They will require a higher margin, right? If, and if those people who already have a loan, they are not able to top up the account or they are not able to service the loan, right? What is going to happen is we are going to see a lot of proposed a false closure, forfeit of house, right? And you're going to see, you're going to see that, that, that that's the start of the crisis, Okay. So again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen today or tomorrow or next week. No, right? It can happen in any, any I think I out I didn't give a timeline, six months in the in, in the six month timeline, right? So these are the things that we need to take note of, right? It's not going to happen, but also remember 
financial market is a forward-looking mechan- uh, uh, work on the forward-looking uh, kind of uh, mechanism, right? Trader or investor do not care about what is happening right now in the exchange, in the interest rate. They care about what is going to happen in the future. They always trade the future. So if the Fed say that in 2022, they are likely to increase interest rate, the investor and the trader will take it that they, they will increase interest rate then tomorrow, right? So that, that's how this market works, right? So even though we see that the Fed do not have to do anything yet, but the, the market will already react to that, right? So again, we have to pay attention to this. That's why today I, I have read a lot of reports Every report are saying that uh, inflation is, uh, is, is, is going to be out of control. And uh, uh, this time around, Federal Reserve is not, is, is, is no, I uh, don't know what, uh, nothing, nothing else they can do. So a lot of reports are saying that. So let's see what the Federal Reserve is going to say by two o'clock, right? So uh, yeah, so these are something which I want to give you a brief. And um, now, so, uh, so the two things that we have, we, we can create a scenario, right? In the event, if the Federal Reserve start to turn a little bit less dovish, right? And they, if, they, if they start to give, bring, uh, bring forward the timeline to adjust the interest rate higher to 2022, then what we are going to see is dollar index is likely to go up very fast. It's going to break through this high and all the way up, right? I think dollar index is going to swing up very, very high. Okay, very high, right? Because uh, the market will react to that news, right? So now you can see that it is not moving. Okay, uh, we 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 will see, right? Because inflation fear will, I think, dollar will move higher. And also, if it, based on this uh, chart. You can see that uh, previously we have an accumulation here that was 2018, right? And dollar index has rallied up for a long time, right? And now it back to the 2018 level. And in this area, we can see that it has spent awful lot of time doing the accumulations. You see this? Accumulations. Now, in 2018, if you take a look at this, the accumulations, the time the, the, the smart money or the bank spent on this accumulation is actually uh, about less 50% of the current accumulations. Right? You can see that the amount of time in 2018 the, where the price spent in these accumulations compared to right now, the amount of time that the bank start to spend on accumulation is actually less than 50% in the previous 2018. Now, in other words, right now, the bank spend more than more time doing accumulations. Now, if we see the price undergo a longer time of accumulations, it means that when we see a breakout, this breakout is going to be long and fear and uh, long and fear la- and, and long lasting, right? So potentially, now we can expect if we see a breakout of the dollar, dollar will not just stop at 94.70. I think this bull run for dollar is going to happen in to, towards this high, 97.80. All right. So again, like I say, all this will depend on what the Fed is going to say. If the Fed turns hawkish, we are going to see the dollar go higher. But if the Fed turns, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, still remain the same, I guess we can still continue to do what we do, but just be careful of the potential uh, property uh, crisis that uh, co- potential collapse that we I'm talking about, right? If the market feel that something is not right, because if you take a look at the S and P today, SPY, see the SPY is like crazy. You can see, continue to make new high, right? And the Bond market also continue to make new high. How can a risk asset, risk investment, and a safe asset, they are moving in the same direction, right? This it doesn't make sense to me. That's why I, I, I suggest to be, be careful, right? Uh, do not uh, trade too, uh, uh, too, uh, uh, 
too much, right? Do, do not over leverage trade uh, within your means. And if possible, try to uh, try to go uh, go uh, lower time frame, right? And and try to uh, reduce uh, how to keep your keep your uh, trading time frame uh, shorter. Let me see. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, uh, you if you can example uh, more like intraday. Try to focus more intraday as a current at the current environment because we have no idea what's going to happen next, right? So if we see an opportunity that we can capture the capture the profit and let's do it within the next. Uh, that means that from the time we enter the trade until the time our trade get uh, closed and done, let's do it. Try to do it within like a couple of hours, right? So in other words, we try to trade on a lower time frame, right? To avoid any unexpected news that potentially might come out, right? The market might move against us, right? So uh, uh, uh try not to trade on a longer time frame because if you hold the hold the trade uh overnight. I think the risk will start to increase a lot because if you trade a whole trade overnight, no, anything can happen, right? Anything can happen, right? So we try not to do that. Now, so how to, you see this, uh, I was looking to, I, I, as I was saying that, I, I was looking to long the euro dollar. You can see the price is going, coming back to fill this gap, right? This is the gap. this gap price coming to fill this gap now so let's let the, let the price come down right because uh, uh uh don't try to short it just let let it go right uh wait until everything settle means uh after after the the fed make their whatever announcement they want to make then we will come in uh where the price is then back uh, after that and then we will take our position accordingly right now if if uh if we see the dollar start moving lower because of what the Fed say, right? Uh, uh, sorry, not dollar, euro dollar start to move lower because of what the Fed say. And uh, what I'm going to uh, wait for trade actually is this area. You can see that I'm not just looking to, to long at this gap. Now, if there's no news tonight, definitely I will left look for long here, right? Last night, I actually... I, uh, I think last night, yeah, last night I actually went long. I can't remember where here. I, I, here. So this 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 right was very nice for me, right? I enter here, uh, take profit there somewhere there, right? So now if the price come down, I want to go long again on this low. But knowing that there's a two a.m. here, so I I can see that potentially price might just come down all the way to take out this low, stop hunting. So let's wait, right? And uh, if we go down lower, let's say go, go to a higher time frame, eight hours, we can see that in the eight hours time frame, we have a very big and obvious uh, uh, this uh, trap order that need to be unlocked, right? So price might even come down to take out the stop loss and go down to this area to unlock this trap order. Right before move higher, right? So market might take this opportunity to unlock this trade order before we are. So I'll be looking for this area, right? But I will not stay until 2 or 2 a.m. That's that's crazy for me. Right. Tomorrow I'll start looking at this area. If the price comes down and look for opportunity to go back long. Okay, this is the area I'm looking. 1.7 to 1760. But definitely I will not trade anything tonight. But that this will happen tomorrow. Let's see what happens, right? But on the other hand, if I see the uh, euro start moving higher, right? Euro start to move higher. Uh, I can see that we are now going through a phase of accumulations right now. So if the euro move higher, let's say, if the price move up to this area, the most you can move in maybe this area, right? We might we may get this high, but this is a bit too short with this news, right? You might the most you can go is here, okay? So if the price come to this area, then we will see, right? It depends. If I trade on a higher time frame, I will look for sell. But with the current situation, most likely I will not. I would like to trade in the shorter time frame. 
So in other words, if the price start moving up to this area, okay, I will go down to lower time frame and trade the one hour time frame. Right? You can see that this is the one. I'll be likely to trade this one hour time frame. This is exactly what I did yesterday on the euro dollar. You can see yesterday I was, as I was saying, I was looking at this too long. I was trading this yesterday. I think I post in the trading room, right? I say this uptrend. So price is coming down. So price came down to exactly to this level. Can you see that? Previously where the price accumulate. So this is the area I went in. I went in here. I went down all the way to one minute time frame. I get in, right? I took my profit somewhere here. Okay, very nice profit. Okay, so uh, so again, so uh, uh so let, let let's see what 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 euro will do to uh uh tomorrow. Okay, price coming down. Sure, I like to see the price coming down. So uh, then I can see stop hunting, right? And then go into the previous uh trap order to uncheck. All right, so that's euro dollar. Now for pound, let's take a look at pound. Um, we we can see that uh, daily time frame shows that it is still in the uptrend, and over here we can see also that this is a very bullish maneuver. Right, this movement down is actually very very bullish because this movement down actually took out all the stop, all this stop, all taken out. Right, all this. These are actually all the sell order. Okay. So price move down, take out the stop loss, and the price moving higher. So now I don't expect the price to just break through, even though my bias is long, right? Because this kind of V shape reversal usually don't happen that often, right? It can happen. So I'm expecting the price to come back down again to test, especially this gap here. Okay, and let's see what happened after the FOMC, see whether the price will swing uh, this uh, pound dollar back lower. I like to go long at the lower price, definitely not at this level, right? So I'm waiting for price to come down lower. But in the event, if we see the, the pound dollar break out, okay, break out, then uh, I think that uh, I will look for long, right? The break out, you not go straight. I think the target will be here if we see the price break out. But if the price break out, I will wait for price to pull back I wait for price to pull back to enter long and with the target, this is the target. Okay. That's why I hope that price will come down lower. Then that will, that will give me a much better risk reward. Right. If the price already break higher and I try to get in around this area, you can imagine that the risk reward is not fantastic. Right. So I really hope that uh, after the price move higher to take out the stop loss here, it will move lower so I can enter around here. Okay, that's what I see on the pound, uh, pound dollar. If you ask any question, you can ask. Yeah. Okay. Any any other currency pair you are uh, anyone are, are, are looking at? Anyone? Euro yen. Uh, I expect the price to move up from here, right? Yes, we are in a downtrend, right? In this blue line time frame, we are in a downtrend. So we can actually expect to look for a sell on the pullback, right? But you can see the price already dropped all the way to this trap order. So it means that likelihood this movement down, the objective has already hit. So if the objective already hit, if the objective is this one, which means that it already hit, which means that right now, price logically should start to move higher to start taking out the stop loss above the swing high, right? So my bias for this pair is still, uh, I want to go long, okay? So let's go down to one hour. Okay, this is a trading range which I draw, I think two days ago. And it's still intact. Can you see that? Right, it's still intact. I, I still want to go long on this pair. But at the current range, I'm not that keen to go long. What I want to go long is, if I see this price 
start to drop lower, right, to test this track order, I want to look for an opportunity to go long at this area. Okay. And then the target will be here. Or even here first. Of course, here will be first. Okay. So um, I'm looking at this area. I, I like to see the price drop below before I go long. Because I think that this, this pair is done moving lower. Even though it's in the downtrend, you can see that it was in the downtrend before. Okay. And now we see that we start to see that after this move down, see after this, this bearish move uh, for EJ, you can see price was moving down, it goes sideways, and we see a, a stop hunting here to stop out everything on the left here. And then we see the price start moving higher. Okay, price start to move higher. You can see it did not take out this high. Right? This high was not taken out. It means that price want to go lower, right? Because price want to go lower. So I'm anticipating a price to go lower. That's why in uh, before, I think a couple of days ago, I was waiting to short. Right, I was say, I was saying that I want to I want to see the price go higher to the, this to test this high here. So I want to sell somewhere there if the price go there. But the price did not go up there. It just stopped around here and it start going back down. Right. So that trade doesn't come come through. So now uh, I like to buy, but only at this area. But if the price come to this area, I would like to sell. Right. Why I want to sell because. The blue line, you can see the blue line, which is a higher time frame. It is in a downtrend. Can you see that? Right. So I want to sell on this rally, which I think that if the price come to this last, this is the last uh, lower high. This is the last lower high, which I believe that if the price goes up, it will respect this lower high and its target should be this last lower high before it start going lower. Follow the higher time frame blue line trend. Right. So if the price come to this level, I would like to sell. If the price come down this level, I would like to go long. But then again, this will not happen tonight. I think uh, it will happen maybe tomorrow or even next week or, or Friday. We do not know, right? So, uh, so we just see, just wait. So that's what I, this is what I have on the EJ. Let me see any dollar sing. Now, dollar sing, I'm um, I actually waiting for the price so that I can go long, right? I think I, I post this in the trading room as well. I was waiting for the price to come even lower, but the price, the low I'm, to, I'm looking at is somewhere here, right? But the price did not come down lower. You, you can see that it actually, it, it came down, right? And then you go in through a phase of accumulation and the stop hunting and then do that, right? It just refused to come lower. Because my idea is here, right? Anything higher, I'm not interested. But surprisingly, right now, I don't know that you can see that now the bank actually set a set up a liquidity double bottom. Okay, so this give me the more com, uh, more this uh, give me the convictions that I think this pair is coming down first, right? I think it's coming down to grab all these stop loss. So when it comes down to this area, this is where I, I want to start to go long, right? Take profit at this level here. We might see the next level or even next level, but let's don't be greedy. Take, take profit here, right? If I take here, I'll take profit there because price come here, my comeback test again before I go higher, okay? So that's all I see. Uh, at the moment, I'm not interested to go do anything on this pair. I think that uh, the bank is creating liquidity. Can you see that? Right? A lot of liquidity below here waiting to be grabbed. You take the liquidity and then go higher. Okay. I think the bank want to go higher. That's why it's con constantly creating a lot of liquidity. This is one hour time frame. If you look at the four hour time frame, uh, no much of different. Uh, eight hours time frame. Same thing, right? Look at this, yeah? See this big bearish candle, right? This is what I'm interested. Good thing, right? Okay. If you look at the weekly uh, eight hours, actually the price already came down, right? Price already came down to this zone, this demand zone. But it, at the same time, it create a double bottom. Okay. It means that, and then we see a lot of gaps here. 
a lot of gaps. Can you see this green candle, green candle, green candle? This is weak. This is eight hours candle. If we go down the lower time frame, they are bound to have a lot of gaps, right? So I think that there's a high chance that we are going to see a uh, bank drive the price lower, grab the stop loss, and then go higher. Okay. So this is an area 1.3566. Before I forget, I want to set my target, set my alarm. 1.3566. One point three five six zero. Okay, create alert there. So when the price come to that level, you will alert me so I can come down, come in and see what's going on before I decide whether what I could to do next. Okay. So there's a do dollar sing. Any anything else? Okay. Or see, so let me let me see. Sometime after I analyze, I need to write now. Otherwise, I forget again. Daily show a completion of distributions. All right, so let's go to daily. Yeah, we see a distribution completed, right? And uh, the market structure is bearish, right? Because we continue to see the market take out the lower low, lower high. It's bearish on a daily time frame. The target could already be hit which means that this lower high, the target is this. Now, if the target is this, it means that right now the target is hit, all right, already hit. And my expectation now is the AJ is retraced higher. If this target already hit, then I will expect the AJ to retrace higher because after all this, this is the distribution, it will retrace higher to so opportunity to take a shot and expect price to even go lower, all right? Uh, with higher for a further down move. Now, why I believe there's a potential further down move, the reason is AJ spent an awful lot of time distributing. Again, the same thing what I said just now. If the institution and the bank spend so much time doing distributing, right? This move down should be quite significant, should be at least to test this low. Okay? So this, right now, this, this, is not justified for this, this amount of time doing a distribution, right? This fall should be around this level. So I think that uh, it can be bearish. Uh, the price target should be lower than what he has already put up. So what, so, what I, so what I say, the price is here. I think there's a further down move. And this further down move, I think target is here. So in... Uh, long time frame or in lower time frame sorry in low time frame i will look for short after price retrace that means that i'm looking for price to go up and look for a sell uh, but in the short term i can look for long right so it means that if i go down to one hour time frame i can potentially look for a long trade here and and and, and write the price up right so that's what I meant. So if we go to a one hour time frame, one hour. Okay. In one hour, what do we see? We see the price have a drop and then go through a phase of accumulations and break out of this trading range. Okay. And then go through a phase of distributions right so what 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 this is telling me this is accumulations this is distributions so what the market is telling me market is telling me that you want to go lower right because i see a distributions right so that's why uh when sometimes when we want to know where the price is going by going to a lower time frame we can actually tell not every time it will be correct but uh, more or less it can be quite true, right? Now, if the price already go through a phase of distributions, it means that price want to go lower. So I think that AJ is likely to, as I, as I, as I was saying, likely to go lower. Now, also, if you, I'm not sure whether you remember what I said something before. Uh, uh, remember a uh, one pattern, right? If we see the price after go through a phase of distributions and it, the price start to fall, 
right? And it starts to fall. And it's coming to a key level of demand. This is a demand, right? And when the price arrives at key level of demand, we will see the price start to retrace higher. Now, a lot of people will think that, oh, well, this demand is rejecting the price. So they, what they do is they start to buy. But not knowing that this is how the market behaves. After the price goes up, it actually to it actually this movement up, right? In a shorter time frame, it looks very bullish. It is to attract the potential buyer to come in to buy. So after that, you will see the price start to go sideways like this, and then like this, and then pump. It go through a phase of distribution over here after a, a forced bullish move. Okay. When the price arrives, then they, they need to gain the momentum they need to create liquidity right so in order to push through this demand all right so so this i think this is what, what exactly the aj is doing right now if we if we now go back to this now look at this we go through uh in the higher time frame like example daily we see the price already completed the distributions right it completed the distribution and now the price arrived this previous consolidations where the bank was buying so we know that at this level a lot of bank was uh, bought before so now the price arrived this level now in it now in order for the price to take out this level right what the bank need is they need to gain some liquidity so the price is moving higher right in order to break this level okay so that's why in the in this one hour time one day time frame we don't see but when we go down to one hour time frame, we can clearly see that there is this distribution already likely to be completed. Can you see that? Right, these distributions, right? So this is what, exactly what I say, right? The price arrived this level of demand, which we saw just now on the left. Then it starts going higher. So in the short term, this looks very, very bullish. So it, it induced a lot of buyers start to come in thinking the price is going higher. But then the price did not go higher. It started to go into consolidations, right? And then we are going to see what happened is after this distribution break, confirm break, we are going to see the price go, go down, even take out this one. The idea is to take out the consolidation on the left, right? Can you see now, right? So this, uh, I think, is the sign that the AJ want to go lower. Okay. Is that okay, guys? Any question? Yeah, it's clear, Benny. Thanks. Okay. How about the rest? The rest of you okay? Yes, Benny. So now, how to trade this pair? Well, we can clearly see that this is a one-hour time frame, right? So how do I, how I, how, what I'm going to trade? Now, if I see the price start to break, okay, then that's good. I like to see the price, the best you can take out this low. Then it started to go back up, all right? Now, if the price did not go down and take out the low, but at least I wanted to take out this low, then it started to move higher so I can sell, all right? So I like to, what I would like to do is I like to wait for price to go up higher, okay? It go up higher, then I look to sell somewhere here. That is the area I'm looking to sell. So if I sell somewhere there, this is where I'm going to take my profit. The next profit is here, right? I'm going to have a very, very good risk reward, all right? And this is too low for me. I want to, I want to sell high, right? So uh, let's see, let's see whether price will go up to this level, and we'll look for a sell there. Okay. Okay. So we have about ten minutes to go. So do you, have, do you guys have any currency that you want to see? Let's talk about your, your, your pair. Excuse me, sir, Benny. Yeah? Yeah, I have some question. Uh, yeah. If ever the price don't go higher here in oh, Japan, yeah, here. if ever the price don't, won't go higher, are you still going to trade when it reaches the bottom and you will go long? Um, or if maybe the price don't go higher. not to do anything. So if the price don't go higher, minimum don't go I need to see is it need to break this. Yeah. 
Okay, at least you need to break this. So if you break uh, this with convince, convince means I need to see really convinced break, not that kind of like okay. like 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 a like a cat eating like that. No, no, not a small. I I want to see convinced break, right? Convinced break. Then the price pull back. Yes, I will short. I will short maybe okay. somewhere here. Okay, thank you. Okay, but definitely I want to see it break this low, mm -hmm. and my target will be here. If we break this low, the target is here. Always, always wait for the pullback and enter yeah, a trade. Right? Yeah, always wait for the pullback. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have discussed the GU already, right? You can watch the recording, yeah, uh, Dominic. Um, Bitcoin. Okay, let's take a Bitcoin. You see Bitcoin, I uh, now when it was around that area, I say the price is coming down, right? I was thinking the price will go even lower, right? You can, that's why you can see that the, those two red zones I draw, those are the gap, right? But uh, it looks like price is not coming down. In fact, we see the price start to move higher. Okay, so uh, this is a daily time frame, and uh, if you are, uh, let's see whether price can break above this high. Okay. Now, if you are trading Bitcoin, uh, basically Bitcoin trade without fundamental, yeah, it's very, very speculative. We can see that price move from make a low here, right? And the price make a high. It has took out this high. Okay. So you can actually put a, you can define your range. You can took out this high. Okay. So now I want to go long. If you are bullish, you can always wait for price to pull back. Right. And then go long. Take your profit here. Because price might, might not take out this high. Right. So you can go. If the price pull back, you can. But on the other hand, if you see the Bitcoin convincingly break and the price stay above, then of course you can continue to look for long. Right. Draw your range. And then wait for price to pull back before you long. Uh, you go down to one hour time frame. I see this is a very, very bullish move in one hour time frame. We can see the price. This orange line is a previous high. That's why we see that there's some sellers start to come in. Right? Sellers start to come in at this 4100. So uh, we see the price break, take out this. Okay, we also see that this is the low, and also this is the origin that take out this high. And now we have a range in the one hour, which is this one. This is the range, right? This is a high, this is a low. So now, very clear already, you know what you're supposed to do if you are buying. Are you buying? Are you looking to buy? Are you looking to buy? All right. If you are looking to buy, uh, you would like to wait for price to come to this area. All right. And see what you need to see. I did something like that. And you buy, take a profit there by like intraday trading. Right. So uh, that can happen. But after also, the other thing that we also need to pay attention is look at this uh, gap that we have here. Right. This entire gap. Price has already filled up, but we still have this much of gap not filled. Okay, so price might just come down, fill the gap, then go higher. All right. So uh, if you go and trade Bitcoin, I would don't I don't recommend you just put a buy limit there, right? As the price moving lower and lower and lower, go down to lower time frame and see whether you see what you need to see before you want to pull the trigger to go long. If you go down to lower time frame and you do not see what you need to see, then don't trade. Let the price go down because basically the price, the market is telling you that you want to go lower, right? To at least fill this gap. In Bitcoin, I also look at Ethereum, right? Because personally, I buy Ethereum. I don't trade. I just buy and keep. <laughs> All right. 
I was hoping the price will come below 1,007. It hit my target. He, my alarm went off when it hit, when it made this low, 1,007. So I came to the chart. I came, I came to my chart and I see that, wow, fantastic. Because we have a low, we have second low, we have third low, we have the fourth low. What is this? Liquidity, right? So I know that in future, bank will need to drive the price down lower than this 1,007. And that's exactly where I want to go long, below 1,007. But after 1,000, you see the market make a low here. The, they create a fourth low. Then they start rally up. It, when it rally up, it do not go up anymore. You can see what happened. It create a double top, right? It create a double, a, a four bottom and double top. Why the bank want to do that? Because this is creating the false, false uh, uh, impressions, thinking that this is a very strong resistance. So there are some trader will start to sell, thinking the price is coming back down to test, right? But this is what they are, the bank is doing. They are creating liquidity for themselves because if the price go down in the future to do stop hunting, okay, that means that they have a buy order here. So if they buy order here, the bank, when they start to move the price higher, they need to take profit, right? They need some, they, when they want to take profit, their order is a sell order. So they need some people to buy from them. And this above the stop loss are all the buy order. These are all the stop loss which is also the buy order, which actually what the bank need, all right? So now you can see that intentionally they are creating a lot of liquidity for themselves, a lot of liquidity. Look at this liquidity again. Look at this gap again, right? Plenty of liquidity and gaps. So I think the price is likely to come down lower and that's what exactly I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the price to come down lower before I want to buy. It came here before, but I didn't buy and just went off. A kind of painful, la, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, from 1007 to, to almost 2003, right? I didn't, didn't, did, didn't miss it, but uh, I think it will come down. I think it will come down. Okay. Now, look at this this big week. This is stop hunting, right? Price move lower, stop hunting. Okay, and now you see what happened? Price come back, unlock, come back, unlock, come back, unlock, come back, unlock, right? And each unlock is only here, right? So, but this week is so deep, right? So I'm hoping the price will come deeper, at least 50%, hopefully, right? And which is about 1,002. Uh, that's where I'm very happily going. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, Ethereum. Anybody trade Ethereum here? I don't trade, I just buy and, buy and keep, that's all. Buy low and then sell high, buy low, sell high. <laughs> no leverage, just basically own money. Okay, you can do that also, uh, actually. But when, if, you buy, if you happen to buy at the 4,004, uh, imagine the price drop to 2,000 now, right? <laughs> you are cursing right now, you lost 50% of your capital so bitcoin cryptocurrency are very very speculative right very speculative i use uh this this call what uh gimini uh, is it gimini they call it uh is it pronounced as gimini g e m i n i gemini 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 <laughs> gemini yeah Okay, I use this, this. This Singapore, they have office, I think. All right, any other question? And by the way, for this uh, 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 Bitcoin or Ethereum, even though it's trading right now at 2002, right? 2002. But... It doesn't mean that you need to have 2002 in order to buy, you know, because you can even come in with $100, right? And this uh, uh, Gemini, the broker, will accept that. That means that you only buy a small, little, uh, small part of this whole entire 2002. You understand? All right? So uh, that is the beauty about this, yeah? <laughs> So 
So you can buy less than one coin, is it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, you just go and online open a, uh, this account, right? Just go and mm -hmm. Google them. And you uh, you can just transfer from your Singapore uh, bank account. Transfer whatever money you want, right? Uh, whether it's $50 or even, I think, I'm, I'm not sure, $10 can or I'm not sure. Lah, yeah? But uh, you can just transfer whatever money in and uh, you do not have to start with 2002 or you, there's no uh, limit that you need to start off. Any amount you can start. And then you, you just buy a small part of this uh, coin. Okay, any other questions? No? No, Benny. It's a good, very clear session. All right. So if no questions, uh, we end here and I'll see you guys uh, next week. And by the way, uh, as I mentioned uh, already, I post in the uh, uh, trading room, right? Uh, those of you who actually uh, subscribed to this trading room, you are entitled to once a month, one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, right? Uh, minimum, uh, maximum one hour, right? For the sessions, one a month. During one, the, the one hour, I mean, you can talk about, discuss about your trading plan, right? You can go through your trading plan or you can ask anything that you need to ask about trading, okay? And all you need to do is go to the calendar, I think I have posted the link there. It's it, it, it is called uh you you what 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 is that what is the name uh, uh Dominic Sir Benny what is that what is that the, the the apps called to book appointments one on one oh I just clicked the link Benny <laughs> sorry uh, I think it is called the link is called you can book me something like that oh yeah yeah you can book me. <laughs> Sir, is yeah. anyone can so, repost but, the link? Uh, is, it is in the, yeah. it is already in the trading room. I was looking for it. It, is, it's on I top. It. it is on top of, I, I pin, I pin the message. I pin the link, right? So the, the, I, it, it should not go, go, go away. I pin, I pin the link. Ah, okay. I, I pin the link, right? So just go and look for the pin. All right. I'll just, I'll just. Take a look at our later. Okay, guys, I think we'll end here. See you guys next week.